what I'm going to do now is to. Oh, I don't know why that's moved. Is to um, start building some of the other. Um, what we call desktop environments. Um, there's a couple of smaller ones, no less capable than the big ones, such as KDE and GNOME. And the first one I'm going to build is called XFCE. So, get rid of this. And go back to the contents. So you'll see that um, XFC and LXDE are the two smaller um, desktop environments and GNOME and KDE are the two bigger ones so I'll be doing them a little bit later so as you can see with XFC desktop if you remember in the last video we did install the first four um, packages from this so we've got less to do we don't need to reinstall them so I'm just gonna start at the top here in case there's open a new tab in case there's any setup to do for the rest of the packages and now it just gives a quick description about XFC so we'll skip on to Garson um, or Garcon let's just click through these Garcon or Garson, so I think I had a separate directory for these if I remember rightly. Yeah, so I'm not going to um, worry too much about changing directories, I don't think, because we could be changing around a lot. I'll just move the file I've downloaded into this directory. Make it a little bit simpler, I think. Um, well, I could try downloading it into here. It depends on how many other dependencies are. Because they're light packages, there's not so much a requirement on other libraries as there are with the bigger packages. So there shouldn't be too many dependencies. So I'll download this. And I'll put it in the. Looks like I've tidied up a lot of folders there. Let me get rid of those first. Double check that they're all directories as they appear in that window before I press enter. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I want to go into XFCE now. There's the four files we've already built. So I'll save this one. So it's quite straightforward. All I need to do is add in the Neville GTK doc to build documentation. And run make. And make install. That's done. Take that one off. And the next one we've got is XFCA4 panel. So this has got a different dependency. So what I'll do first is I'll download 
this file into XFCE. Open this up in another browser. Uh, another tab, sorry. That's got no other dependencies. I'll just download that into the normal BLFS directory. So I'll go back. Again, it's fairly straightforward. We've just got an extra option for the documentation. And we can run, uh, build it with Ninja. There's no test suite, so when this is done, we'll just install it. So that's done. Let's tidy it up. So that's that one done. Let's see what that is. That's in known chapter thirty three. So back to this XFC4 panel, back to the directory. And once again, straightforward configure. You can optionally add in the doc enable documentation switch. and build a package. Done. So that's installed, tied it up, and we'll take that one off and move on. So next one's through now, which is like the file manager for XFCE. So we need some icon themes here. So I'll open these up in the tabs. GSF Okay, so back to the BLFS directory, we'll download this file. Similar to before, just copy the configure and enable the documentation. And build it. We can test this. It says a couple of tests unknown to fail. So I'll see if that's true for us. Looks 
looks like they've passed. Yep, everything's passed, so we'll just hit make install. And tidy up. So that's chapter 9. GSF. Now I've got a package called Tumblr. No other options here, so I'll just copy and paste. Um, does say GT Talk is optional there? I wonder if we have got an option to build the documentation. Let's have a look. So it looks like there's several options there. It builds HTML by default. So let's add this on. See if we can build all three options. There's no mention there of the documentation, but let's make and see if it builds. No, it's broken with the PDF, so it obviously needs something else. Yeah, that seems to work. I'm going to rebuild this from scratch as usual. Things we've rerun the config and build several times. So recall the last config command. Build it with make. and install it. So that's complete. So that's in 35. Okay, that's one of the packages we've got coming up to build, strangely. So we can knock that one off. So I'll have to move that as it's part of this XFCE into XFCE. Now we've got LXDE icon theme. Again, I suppose arguably it's part of LXDE, but they've grouped together all the icon themes, so that's why it's not part of the LXDE chapter. Right, hopefully the mirror will be good today. If that's finished downloading, I'll try and get the other one while that's downloading. Uh, icon naming utils we need. It's a little simple, that's a Perl module. XML simple, yeah, we haven't done that one. 
So let's load that up. Right, this is finished downloading now, so I can extract it. There's no options here, just configure and make install. And then we have to run this command. And that's done. So I'll tick that off. LXD icon thing. this Perl module, so let's download that, oh what's this here, optional, an alternative pass which will be used if available, let's have a look, looks like we've already got that one, um, sorry not Python, XML SAX 102, yeah, Hexmore Sax XPAT for further additional passwords can be used by setting a variable in Perl code, right? So let's download that one as well. So I'll move that into here. Build it. And install it. Right, why didn't that work? That's strange, and that's what we're trying to install. And it's in this current directory. Space support, XML sax base we've got XML sax one or two. Right, let's try it again from scratch. Let's try 
for this a bit of time. So I'll make file. So there's no complaints there. So let's skip, skip two, but one's passed. Okay, that worked that time, not sure why. It's strange, I don't know what I did last time then, that stopped that from working. Anyway, that's installed now. So that's that module, now we're going to do XML simple. Okay, and that's installed. So now we should be able to build this icon name utils package. So go back to PLFS. These are all small packages, they're simple enough. Straightforward configure and make and make install. Chapter 28 again. Icon naming utils. GNOME ICON 3 uh, theme, so looks like we might have downloaded this one. Maybe not. Okay, again, just straightforward configure, make, install. Nothing special about this. That's done. I'll mark on three and twenty eight again. So now we're in a position to install Sunar, so it's back to XFCE. This one. No options here, just configure and make all and configure by itself, see what it says in my other summary. like that's configured correctly let's build it
bearing in mind that um, I'll just install this while I'm talking that TWM hasn't got a file manager of any sort um, you could just go you know if you want to stick to TWM you could just go straight for this then I'll install its minimum requirements fairly minimum requirements for uh, all the dependencies it's got and you could actually use this so if I type Thunar uh, we now for the first time in TWM have a file manager which um, we haven't had up to now and you can see it's using like the icon icons from GNOME so and like I say, if you want to stick to a basic or lightweight um, desktop environment or even just a window manager then you can cross match, mix and match all these um, programs just because you are you want XFCE doesn't mean you have to have Thunai, you could have Dolphin from KDE or you could have um, Nautilus from GNOME, the GNOME project Obviously, they'll bring in all the libraries that they need, which are probably quite hefty. But something like Thunai is quite lightweight, so um, and and yet still very capable. So uh, yeah, it's quite good for older machines or machines with um, less memory or uh, less disk space than what modern machines have. So um, close the window. And tidy that one up. So that's Thunar. Now I've got one called Thunar Volman. And it looks like we've got all the dependencies for this one. Install that. That's complete. So Tumblr we've already done. So we can just skip past that one. There's no point in reinstalling it. We go to XFC for App Finder. So that's basically the XFC desktop install. These are just like additional apps that we're building now. I'll say that, that's not quite right because there is still a package called XF Desktop and XFWM and XFC for session so that's what I said was not quite right. Um, but certainly these do look like applications which could probably run in their own right. Probably. I've never tested it. This is all quite straightforward. So that's the app finder. Knock that one off. We've got a power manager to install next, which needs a package called UPower. Dbus mock, which is a Python module. Dbus mock, now I've got that one. So save it.
Python 3 setup and install. That's done, so I'm just going to make a note of that. I've been keeping a paper note that my Python modules, is, is not so many of them as the Perl. So Python bus mock so tidy that up and then we can go to U power and this goes back in the BLFS directory. So this has got some extra options. Uh, the only one we're probably interested in is to add in the option to build documentation. And let's build it. Check. I does so that some may not pass due to missing files. You mock dev, yeah, that's one of the packages outside of um, BLFS. So if that's important to you, then obviously you'd need to download that. So apart from that, the test that it did do passed so let's install Not that one and mark that off chapter 12 you power So now I can do the power manager. So again, just copy and paste commands, there's nothing else given. And install it. That's complete. Next one's XFC for settings. Looks like we've got all the requirements for that. We'll just check the camera, I'm sure we have. Got that one, it looks like we've got all the dependencies. Again, oh, uh, we've got some extra level sound settings, embedded setting dialogues. Oh, so maybe we can add these in. 
as we've got all the options. It says we haven't got lib input support with xorg. I thought we had this. Yeah, we've got the executable there. Um, I think I might install this again. Oh, and this is a switch maybe on the config. that switch. Um, so it does got optional so maybe that's why they're not well they're normally for the optional stuff they do put the switches in so it's possible that they're not you know, I forgot to put that in so I'll just add this enable command in see if it finds it then no it's still not found it that's strange Install that in case there's something that Lib Input hasn't got that we've added since. Although I can't see what that could really be. So I'll just remove this. Go to the XC directory, I think it's in there. Lib input, yes it is. I'll just check this kernel settings set as well. So I do cat boot config and grep for that parameter. So it is set in the kernel. And it's not set as a module, so it exists. The events generated during the test from interfering with your desktop, copy the file. Restart X. that before, although I wouldn't have thought it would matter to the package. So let's create the build directory and take a look at the options. Let's just check we've got XOR prefix, we should have, there's no reason why that should have disappeared. Okay. So we need to remove D tests from the full tests. Oh, 
Sorry to remove that debug GUI for more functionality. So we've got PY passing, so one is going to be skipped anyway. So we'll remove the documentation as well. And we've got that installed by the looks of it. Let's just check that. I can't see any reason why I wouldn't have that, even though we haven't got a tablet, a drawing tablet. I um, since remember we installed Sphinx. Um, an exception. Because it's off the um, BLFS book. So I think that should be all we need. But I didn't put the two dots in. Better. Now let's run Ninja. Alright, I thought we had Oh, is there something else that it needs? Okay, right, we'll have to add the um Not, not to build a documentation option. Right, so we've got an empty build directory again. So we need to add in documentation that was false. So it's built. If you want to run a full test, remove the detest and ready to configuration running libin lib input test suite so it says to copy the file test conf so cp that into xor prefix share conf d and restart x No, it doesn't exist. Oh, it'll be below here, won't it? That's why. And of course it has to be done as root. So let's have a quick look at that, see what that file's all about. Out of interest. Okay, let's see. So it's basically telling devices to ignore lib inputs test suite. That's why we need to restart the server. So I'll control Q on the browser and control D here. Restart Xorg and TWN. Go back to sources BLFS XC lib input lib input and build. Now we should be able to run. So we've done that. If you've never full test, you can run the main test as root user by running ninja test. So do minus E. Uh, I can't remember if sudo's got the xorg prefix, I presume it will need it. Yes it has, okay, so we'll do sudo ninja test.
I'm actually going to abort this test and rerun it because um, I can. Oh, that's broken it. Um, oh, that's actually. Don't know what that's done there. Um, yeah, that's. Sounds like it's caused the machine to reboot actually. The fans went very loud then. Um, right, oh, and the screen's gone again. Oh, it's gone into standby, that's what's happened. Um, what I'm going to do is run this in another session because I had to click a lot of times there on the window, and again, I'm not sure if it's timing out because I was taking some time to click on each window. So I'm going to quit this session. And do the sudo init five to get LXD up and running. And I'll run the test from here using um I can't remember what I was using yesterday. SWM. Yeah, it was that one. So I'll get a terminal up. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. I have to make this huge to be honest because I'm going to try and do this without the browser. So CD sources BLFS XC they can put build and that's what we wanted. So hopefully these windows that are created should just flick up rapidly. Oh, leftover rules. Is that because I've quit some? Maybe a good idea to rerun all of this from scratch, possibly.
Okay, this is getting a little bit annoying. It um, seems to be putting the PC into standby mode. Um, and it looks like a bug why well, it's doing that because there uh, seems to be a failure for each one of those where that was happening. Um, so I'm just going to stop it there. Apart from that, I can't see that there was going to be. Well, there's four failures there where the standby mode kept on happening. Five, six, seven errors, I'd say. We, we didn't get this error the first run around, uh, first time around when we were in uh, TWM. Um, and that's probably because it says leftover rules. It's probably because I did Control C to abandon the testing. So um, I'm just going to put this, make this a little bit smaller. Uh, apart from the bug, obviously, there, which are probably the ones that are referred to here, um, I'll, I'd say that's a successful test. So I'm going to install or reinstall uh, the package now. Uh, I'm not going to do documentation again. I'll do an LD config. Keep doing that. So do LD config. Um, so I'm not sure whether this would even have made any difference reinstalling this. Um, one thing I will do though is I'm going to come out and reboot the machine because I don't know. In fact, I'm going to shut it down. I don't know what what's been going on with the um, machine putting into standby where it's in an unknown or unstable state so I'm just going to shut it down and um, reboot it ok so it's powered off I'm going to start it up again now Login. And I think I've got to, well, I've got to go back to the sources directory. BLFS XC. Let's see if that's still there. Yeah, it is. In fact, there's a couple of directories I need to get rid of there. Okay, so that's tidied up. So I go back to um, XFCE extract XFC for settings. Call this configure command and see if it recognises the lib input now. If it doesn't, um, I guess I'll have to carry on. Yeah, it still doesn't recognise it. Um, let's see what it's doing actually. Actually, is there a config log? Yeah, there is. Let's search for lib input. It's found it on the configure command. Checking for optional package XOR lib input greater than 6.0. 
we've got 1.15 so it is there um, I wonder if it's looking for something called XORG hyphen lib input. Um, what I might try is what I did yesterday with the um, sawfish and run the configure with libs equals. In fact, let's find it first. Where is lib input.so? So it's in opt xorg bin lib input. Oh, that's the binary. So is it just a binary, is it? Let's have a look at the package. Oh, I can pass it to lib. input SO ah, so is lip input SO missing I oh, know it's there okay Yeah, so what I was going to attempt to do was to run the config with this libs variable. I think that's what I did yesterday. Minus L lib input. I think that's how it was used. Obviously not. Um, let's see if I've still got it in the history. Right, I need to specify the version. By the looks of it. Dot so no, that's obviously not working this time. So it can't find that. So it can't find it. So echo is it um LD no library path opt XORG lib. So why can't it find that? This is very strange. Alt Xorg Lib. No.
Um, what I might do is try something else. Export library path to equal. Instead of the link, I'll use. the actual um, the actual real directory see if configure likes that no, I still not found it um, I'm wondering if it's let's put this back actually how it was and I'll try one more thing because um, this was looking for xorg dash input, so what I can do is push d let's do it out lib. So it goes to the library star and with the link. If I remember which way around this is lib input so ten dot thirteen to lib in sorry xorg lib input dot so Oh, ln minus s, that should be for soft link. I don't want to do it as a hard link. Oh, what have I done wrong there? Oh, of course it's xorg now, isn't it? xorg. Yeah, so I'm wondering if the package is looking for something called xorg lib input so if I pop the directory back rerun the configure no that's not it either okay so I'll give up with this I'm hoping it's not important So I'll remove that sim link and go back, tidy up. And start again, but just have to ignore that. It's obviously not causing a problem with the configure. Um, I'd just like to know why it's not finding the, um, let's do another help. So I'm checking. Yeah, just like, I'd like to know why it's not finding it when we clearly have it. So I'll just run the configure without it. And we'll, hopefully, it will build. Yep, seems to have done. So let's install. Apart from that little quirk with lib input, that seems to have been okay. So that's XFC settings. So now we're going to the desktop. Got all these options. So let's download this.
So again, there's no options. I'll just run it and make it. Configure it and make it rather. And install. Desktop. And now we're going to build the actual window manager. Optional external package there, so I'm not going to bother with that. Again, just configure and make, no, no tests to be done. And we can install it. And that's that complete. So we've just got one more package for the desktop manager itself, the desktop environment, which is the session, imagine this is session manager, yes it is, yeah. Okay, so there's just a, an explanation there about disabling something that's not needed on the modern system. And let's install that. Um, well, as strange it tells us, there's several optional runtime dependencies down here, but um, they're only runtime, so we've got all these installed. When building XFCOC4 package, some configuration files are installed in these locations. And you need to update the databases using these commands. So we can probably run them now. Probably won't do a lot at the moment actually. You can start XFC4 from run level 3 using X in it or from run level 5 using a display manager such as LightDM. Um, so to use the run level 5 method you can set your own X in it. Um, I'm only using the run level 5 to start the um, display manager up so that we can select sessions and so on. Um, but obviously as you've seen as we've gone through different window managers there's a way of making certain things permanent. So we could actually start that off to test it and then we'll carry on and build the, I think there's five XFCE specific applications, although again, these would likely work in um, other environments. So I'll just tidy it up there. I'm going to quit now and go to init5 to get the um, desktop manager up. And we should see XFC here in the list. There it is at the bottom. And 
and there is the desktop with a little mouse or rat thing. So I could carry on here, get a terminal up, choose preferred application for the terminal. So there is only one at the moment. So I imagine if I cancel this, there'll be a settings somewhere where I can probably change that so you can see there's loads of settings here. sure which one it would be actually. Preferred applications, there you go. Utilities, yeah, see this. Nothing set. So if I set it there and close it, it should spawn straight away now, which it has done. And oh, let's make this still perhaps even though it looks a bit nicer, it's got nice icons and so on. It's still got X terms, so it still behaves the same. So the menus, you use the mouse buttons again. The behavior of the program itself hasn't changed, it's just the appearance that's been created by the um, uh, desktop environment that we're using. So I'll start off the web browser, so it doesn't know which one's our favorite. In fact, it doesn't know about Falcon actually either. That's interesting. But we can locate it. It'll be in user bin. Scroll down. All these programs we've built. There's Falcon executable there. Open it. Don't know what that does. Maybe it passes in a, a web page, possibly. I don't know. And yep, that seems to have loaded fine. I'll we'll just shrink it down so that we can see the icons at the bottom. Just keep them visible. And we can go on to build a few applications. So I'll go back into Sources, BLFS, XFCE. First one got is Parole. What's this do? Oh, it's a DVD CD music player. It uses GStreamer. So it also requires GSC plugins good, which we haven't built yet, and Taglib. So let's download Taglib. That can go into, you can see even the Save As, um, Save File dialogue's different. It's come up completely differently. So I want to put this into BLFS. So tag lib. There's no options so I just build it as it is. So make install. That's done. So I drop that. Oh no, um, need to know where that belongs. Multimedia library is forty two. So I tidy that up. If I was in the right window. Okay, now we need the GST stream G stream of good plugins. So this needs a few extra packages. That one we haven't got. Trying to recall these ones. 
DV. Simply installed speaks. Let's check that. Yeah, looks like we might have done. Yeah. So lib DV is for DV video. So link has. Okay. That's a source forge package. So while that, let's see what server it's coming from. Okay, that should normally work slowly. I'll get this one up and running as well. That's libdv. So let's extract it. I've got to remember to click on the windows now because we're not in TW anymore. This parameter is required if an X window system is not installed. It also prevents configure testing for libxv, which is only used for an obsolete program, PlayDV, that will not be built with current Linux headers and also need other obsolete dependencies. Okay, that sounds like a sensible thing to disable. That's done. That's install the package and that's complete so libdv is in 42 as well libdv and now we install mpeg123 simple install That's installed. And tied it up. And that's in 43. Now we should be able to install GST plugins good. So that should be okay. Like I said, I think we've got that installed. We reinstalled GCC. And any of these plugins need to be installed before you install this package, obviously to make have it make use of it. So there's no extra options. We can just extract it. Uh, this is just plugins. Good.
Okay, that's built successfully. There's a test we can run. And it says one will fail. Apparently not, that was a complete success, so let's install it. And that's done. GST plugins good forty two. Now we can install this parole, which is part of the XFCE applications. Right, looks like this is more awkward to navigate. It's put in the, but where is it put in the folders? Right, everything's in alphabetical order, including the folders, which is, well, it depends on your preferences. For me, it's not particularly the best way to doing things. Okay, so... Simple install again. Oh, we've got an option. If the deprecated GStream of 0x packages are installed, I can't see that anything mentions the word deprecated. No, so I think I'll be inclined to leave that off. Just configure it and make it. Especially with deprecated uh, things we shouldn't really be using. Okay, that's done. And that's installed. So that should be the multimedia I would have thought there it is there parole media player yeah, that seems to be working okay I haven't got any media on here obviously so can't play anything but um, looks like an open network location is quite fancy um, I just remember there was something in the previous chapter about reloading yes it's this database <coughs> so in theory after we've all installed everything we should be running these to ensure icons and um, mime associations are run so I'll run them now. Sudo. Oh yes, that's why sudo. What happens is because it's an ampersand, it's joining two separate commands together. The sudo is only working on the first command, so that's why that failed that second command. Um, this won't have made any difference. The running of the program, although it might have made some difference if we double clicked a, uh, a file. Um, let's try and find um, something like. Okay, I need to change my keyboard in here. I wonder if I can do that in the settings. Uh, 
those settings. Keyboard. Layout. So the X server I don't think has got anything specified in it. Um, I think I set the keyboard in the TWM settings or the X term settings as I remember. So I need to add a different layout. English UK Extended, and I'll remove the U, uh, US one. So I'm not sure if that will. Yes, it's just switched straight away actually. So that's good. That's clever. Um, yes, yeah, so I was going to do find. Uh, so I'm going to start at MKV, see if we can find any videos to play, to test that. There's one there. Whether that's a video or not. Do file. Okay, that's a directory. Alright, let's say don't use. Let's try finding MP something. Oh well, there's loads of them. Oh, let's try start or MP. So there's loads of do not use there. Let's try that one. Well, this one looks better. Random a uh, cube. Let's try MP4 on its own. Example movie. That sounds like a good one. So let's rerun the. Media player, open location, oh that's only a network location, ok so let's do open and navigate to this location. So let's go to the root and we just go to opt, text live, 2020. Text MF dist text latex and WE and WE example movie. Right, okay, so that's interesting because I thought we had the X264 um, installed. Maybe it doesn't work directly with this. Maybe it's got its own plugin. Um, let's see what. Yeah, there's nothing there about XF, uh, X264. So it's a bit unfortunate. So we won't install that. So let's look for. Um, let's look for AVI. No, let's try MPG. So we'll try that one. Don't install. Open. So let's go to 
Techsmith dist documentation doc latex movie 15 files random no it needs a video decoder for that <laughs> not getting on very well here So I can't think what else we could try without these additional plugins. Um, oh, let's try DV because that was one of the formats we installed. No. Um, let's see what other plugins this. So it looks like it's quite good for sound. So let's try a MP3. Looks like there's a couple of things there. Top latex, I'm view, whatever that word is. Is that German to me? Pure wrong. Oh, there's several in here, okay. MP3. Appears to be a text file, right. Let's try this one down here, latex animate. Latex. Oh, in the source. So we source latex animate files. Oh, let's try media nine actually. If it's got a bird. Uh, media nine. Media 9 files. Bird as another MP4. Oh, yes, this is one we tried before, wasn't it? Okay. I'm just going to listen to up the headphones. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. just some birds twitting there so that's obviously working okay it's a shame we can't test the video part of it so yeah that's working fine um, in fact I wonder if we could try testing that we can open it folder so if I copy this Paste that into here. And look for bird. Yep, it's worked. So it's the association that's created with this command here. That's what that would have done. Associated that file with this app. So that's working fine. And I imagine if we try to open this again, yeah, it's saying it needs a, a decoder. And then there's a PDF there, let's try and load that. We should, yeah, GIMP's loading it. Um, I thought we had a couple of other, open this other application. I thought we'd loaded some PDF viewers. 
obviously not. No, not sorry. But you can see there's some other files here if we double click on these. Again GIMPs the viewer by default. Although one of the applications we are about to install is a um, image viewer. So let's move on and do the next application. So I'll come out of this. Yep, tied it up. So let's move on to XFC4 terminal. So this is our own version of our own terminal. So this needs VTE 0583. Looks like we've got all the options for that. Save it, so it's back to the BLFS. So we've got some switches here. We've got Forbidden installed, so we can get rid of that. So let's create the build directory. And that's interesting. Wonder why Mizon doesn't point to the parent directory this time. Not sure if that's uh, correct or not. I thought all the Mizon commands had the dot dots at the end. We can add the documentation. Um, I'll build it as it says there, but I'm not sure. Whether that's right or not. So it's built, let's test it. So it looks like that's built. And let's install it. There must be some sort of cleverness in Meson there where it looks for the parent directory, I imagine. Um, I don't know how how else it would know what we're building with a blank build directory. So that's installed. So that's in 33. VTE. So let's tidy that up. Download this terminal emulator. So I'll download it into BLFS and then I'll copy it. No extra options, a simple build. Uh, 
that's what we got ninja make this time and that's done so let's just rerun this commands again We should have a new terminal now. Um, if we do this, it will open up the current one. So we need to change the settings to view it or run it directly. XFCE terminal, there it is there. So it doesn't look a lot different, apart from the fact we've got a menu bar. So we'll have a lot of extra options we can set. I wonder where we can set the font size, just zoom in. Looks about yeah, roughly the same size. So I could shut this one down now and use the more advanced one. It's the most advanced one we've got, I think. do that, but just remove it, can't I? As it's installed, um, and I'll change the default terminal to the XFC terminal for the future. Um, I'll run Terminal Eliminator now. Yes, it's running the XFC one. So that's good. Um, so that's that application done. Take that one off. So next we've got XF Burn, which I presume is a CD burner. Yep. Got a couple of extra packages to install. So lib AO. Straightforward copy and paste again. Unsafe paste. Okay, it's warning us. I don't know if we can turn that off. That could be quite annoying if it keeps happening. Let's try it again. Yeah, it looks like it's going to do it every time. Let's see if there's some settings, otherwise, that's going to be quite annoying. Preferences. Because it blinks, I like that because I can see straight away. Show unsafe paste dialog, so that's what we want. And we'll set that behavior as well. So that basically anything we highlight goes to the clipboard. And no, I'll leave it off actually, that might be a bit of a nuisance. Okay, so yeah, it's not happening now, so that's good. 
So let's install it. Notice the colours are a bit more muted on this terminal. So they've adjusted the palette. They're not quite as bright as they were in the um, X term. And I imagine the X term is using the default colours. So that's installed. Let's uh, mark that one off. 42 lib AO. CDRAO SourceForge download. Let's check these other ones aren't. It's taking its time. Let's find another mirror. Okay, so let's tidy this up. the CDR AO so there's no extra options again install the package and it's done FS again just a straightforward copy and paste nothing to think about here make install and that's done That's in 45 as well, the ISO FS. The burn. Once again, just straightforward, copy and paste. Install it and tidy up. So that's under forty five again, lib burn. So XF burn should have everything it needs now. So go back to XFC and move xf burn into this directory and extract it and again just a simple build and that's done So that just needs to have the um, 
files updated here again. And we should be able to start that up as well. XF burn. So that's obviously working okay. Um, although the drive's got a CD writer in it, there's or the PC rather. Um, I've got a blank disk available, so um, I imagine this would work. I've never used this before. Let's try that. Can I check this? Can refresh it. Check disk. I presume that's at the end. It says the drive is empty. Anyway, it looks like it's working fine. So that's XF Burns. So now we've got a package called Restretto, which is a image viewer. So we've got all the options for this. Again, configure, make, install. Nothing could be simpler. Apart from you do things as root and things aren't configured right. So, um, I need to go back down here. Remove a stretto. Just check I haven't messed anything up here. Let's try that again, it should work this time. And install it. And I'll recall this command to update the database. And I'll tidy up. So we should have Restretto here, graphics I imagine, yep, there it is, let's see if we can actually cause it to load an image now. So this one before I open GIMP up, it's still opening GIMP, but we should be able to associate it with the Restretto now, open with the Restretto image we are, and there it is, and you can see it's got a thumbnail of all the other images in the same directory. So that seems to work fine. So I'll mark that one off and just got one more XFC application to install, which is XFC for notified D, it's notification daemon. Again, we've got all the options. And again, it's a straightforward build and install. And let's install it. Probably don't need it, but I'll do the database update. Anyway, just in case. And it says you can test the notify daemon with this command. And there it's put a little notification up here. 
and I've clicked on it and it's got rid of it. So that works fine. And just as I said before, just because these are XFCE tools doesn't mean to say they won't work in other desktop environments. So if I just tidy up. this package and mark it as complete. Um, if I quit this session, um, I'm not even sure whether this will keep some of these desktop environments remember locations of windows. So I'm going to try that to see if it will do that. Um, let's do the old list. look, save session for future logins, so I'll just click log out, I'll go to my terminal 1, and I'm going to do sudo init3 to get rid of the desktop manager, so that should have gone from terminal 7, which it has, and now I'm going to just do startx to start up the um, TWM. Now you notice the Falcon's got reduced size because of the little icons that are at the bottom here and there's probably a taskbar at the top as well so it's remembered it's new dimensions so that's why because there's no dimension set in the uh, TWM start off for, uh, start up for Falcon but if we do something like um, Ristretto just type the name of the file, you see it's recognised it as a binary presenter. It wants us to locate it somewhere on the screen and there you can see it's it's working. Recently used it hasn't remembered the ones we've used before. Maybe it's because we're in a different environment possibly. Um, the XF burn should work as well. As should all the others. There's no reason why they shouldn't work. Oh, okay. Maybe there's some other options we need to run. Using new dev. Let's try help GTK. Display equals is it kernel zero? No. Well, obviously, yeah. Obviously, there's a problem with that one. Now maybe it is that it needs some other libraries loaded that TWM doesn't load. That's quite possible. Um, Let's prove that it's not the environment. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's switch back to 5. Let's log in again. So it's remembered all our windows. You saw them all pop up. Let's run XF burn again. Yeah, it's running fine from here. Let's run it from the command prompt. Oh, right, okay, so we did get, we didn't get a segmentation fault and it did run. So it's obviously there's something uh, to do with the display environment that's stopping it from running within TWM. So that's XFC4. Um, next time we'll be moving on to LXDE and building that desktop environment.